Welcome to Psy Q, my life and lights. How well do I know basic science? What is my easy science IQ? With this easy to understand video, I improve my Psy Q. Science is like the spicy secret sauce that enables the tech objects that I use every day. 1. 7 Eye-Opening Ideas We start with an overview of these important science ideas. Welcome to Science with 7 Easy Ideas. There is science in space and in sunshine. Science is in everything from dark to the light. Welcome to the true story of science with 7 easy ideas from atoms alone to galaxy glue. 1. Everything on Earth is made of atoms. Actually, everything we see is only made of less than 100 different types of atoms. Atoms combine together to make new chemicals called compounds. Living things are mostly made of these atoms. That includes plants, animals, and us. The sun is made of atoms too. Inside stars, small hydrogen atoms join together to make a new element, helium atoms. When atoms join, energy is given off. This makes the sun hot but is not on fire. This is called fusion. So when atoms join together, energy is given off. Interestingly, energy is also given off when atoms break apart. This is called fission. When uranium atoms break into smaller atoms, energy is given off. The energy from splitting uranium atoms powers the atomic bombs and electricity power plants. How is electricity made? 2. Electricity and magnets are related. Want to know a secret? Just turning wires near magnets make electricity. It's that simple. All the AC electricity around me is made just this way. Water, steam, and wind powers all turn the wires near magnets to make the electricity. The reverse makes electric motors move. Electricity flows in wires makes a magnet that pushes on other magnets to make motors turn. Wow! These all move because of electric motors. Did you know? The Earth is a giant magnet too. I see this with a compass. Electricity and magnets also make electronics work. Digital means bits of electricity that power computer chips. These drives work with magnets. Next, electricity makes light in light bulbs. 3. Light bends, bounces, and beams. It is hard to explain what light is. It is easier to see what light does. Light bends. We see this in prisms. Also, when light goes from air to water, lenses bend light to take pictures too. Light also bounces. Light reflects in mirrors and lakes. Also, we see the moon because it reflects the sunlight. The sun gives off light. With a hot fusion, the sun gives off light or shines. The sun should shine for 4 billion years more. Sunlight uses cool chemicals to make its own light. Light is also why we see. With light, we also see movies. Some movies are about dinosaurs. 4. Life Changes It is amazing that dinosaurs and other creatures once lived on Earth. Over time, life changes and evolves. Fossils show us glimpses of interesting life forms of the past. We wonder at how the world changes over time. Why is oil called a fossil fuel? Let's go back in time millions of years ago. As Asian sea life dies, it settles on the ocean floor, get covered with sand. Over time, 
heat and pressure turn the carbon into oil and natural gas. Oil is buried deep underground. How do our ancestors learn about oil? Over time, oil seeps through the rock cracks up to the surface. Asian people learned that oil burns. Today, people drill holes into the earth to get oil and natural gas. We use oil and gas as fuel to get energy. 5. Energy changes form. Fuel has carbon atoms from ancient life. When fuel burns, chemical energy changes into the heat energy. Fire has three parts. Fuel C for carbon atoms quickly combine with air oxygen atoms. When the atoms join, they give off heat and light. Fire powers machines. For example, controlled bursts of burning gas push pistons down to make car engines move. In a jet engine, air comes in, burns, and then quickly pushes the plane forward. Radio waves help keep planes from crashing into each other. 6. Radio waves are useful. Radar sends out radio waves. Some of the waves reflect off objects like airplanes. The reflected waves return to the radar station. Bounce radio waves on radar screens help keep planes safely apart. Planes and ground stations use radios to communicate. Guess what radios use? Yup, they use radio waves. Radio waves can be as long as mountains are high. Radios don't need wires. It is why they are called wireless. Wi-Fi is another wireless communication. It uses radio waves to connect computers together. Smartphones use radio waves to make calls. iPhones are made by Apple. Why do apples fall off trees? 7. Gravity is attractive. Real apples fall to earth because gravity pulls them down. Gravity is what keeps our feet on the ground too. Gravity is pull power. Heavy objects pull on or attract lighter ones. Gravity is why the moon circles the earth. It is also why the planets go around or orbits the sun. Our solar system is a part of a galaxy that turns together in space because of gravity. Gravity is the glue that keeps it all together. To close, gravity is attractive. Radio waves are useful. Energy changes form. Life changes. Light bends, bounces, and beams. Electricity and magnets are related. Everything on Earth is made of atoms. Today, our world is changing. Science helps us make sense of these world-changing events. Daily, digital objects get more powerful. Also, computer-controlled machines and robots are doing more jobs. Knowing science helps me adapt and thrive to the flood of tech changes. Planes fly with the science of four engaging forces. Welcome to Science of Airplanes. An airplane weighs the same as 100 elephants. Why do airplanes fly? It is all about four uneven forces. We start on the ground at the airport gate. After people and luggage are on the plane, the door is closed. Next, little cars called tugs push back the planes from the gates. To save weight, planes do not have reverse gears. The engines go faster with the first force. 1. Thrust forward. Inside jet engines, fans squish air. Next, the fuel burns. The exhaust pushes out the back and thrusts the plane forward. Thrust pushes the plane forward faster and faster. Next, two forces push up or pull down against each other. 2. Lift up. Air pushes or lifts the plane up. 
Here are two ways to think about lift. Faster air flows over the wing and then down. This pushes the plane up. Here is another way to see this. Faster air on top has lower pressure. The higher the pressure below, the more it pushes the plane up. Try this. Hold a piece of paper like this. Blow over the top. See how air pressure pushes or lifts the paper up. As the plane lifts up, it has to overcome gravity. 3. Gravity Down Gravity is larger objects pulling on smaller ones. Earth gravity pulls down on the plane. Gravity is opposite force to lift. There is a point where lift up is stronger than gravity down. It is called wow or weight off wheels. The plane takes off. The plane leaves the ground with lift. Wow! The plane continues to lift up until it cruises. There is a point where lift up and gravity down are even or balanced. The plane stops climbing up and stays at the same level. Engine thrust continues to push the plane forward. During flight, controls change the plane's direction. Rudder moves the plane left or right. Tail elevators move the plane up or down. Ailerons roll the plane from side to side. Pilots combine the three controls to smoothly change the plane's direction. Pilots find their way or navigate the planes with sensors, GPS, and computers. Pilots in airplanes communicate by radios with people in ground stations. This includes asking for permission to land. Hello, can we land? Yes, you are cleared to land. How do we bring the plane back to land? With help from our good friend Gravity. Slow the engines to reduce thrust. Less air over the wings reduces lift. Gravity is now stronger than lift. Gravity pulls the plane back down to the ground. But we have one more force to talk about. 4. Drag back. This force is a bit of a drag. Air in front pushes or slows the plane back a bit. This force is called drag. In flight, engines have to push harder because of drag. Plane shapes are streamlined to reduce drag. When it's ready to land, the engine slows. With less lift, gravity pulls the plane down to the ground. When the plane lands, spoiler flaps increase the drag to help slow the plane too. Next, steering moves the plane left or right on land. Slow-moving engines push the plane forward. Brakes stop the plane at the new airport gate. So, our flight story has come full circle. From the land to the sky, and back to land again. To close, may the forces be with us when we fly. Engines thrust forward, wings lift up, gravity pulls down, drag pushes back. Planes fly because of air and four forces. Three, box. Science enables machines to move, to think, and to learn. Welcome to the science of bots. What do smart bots mean to me? Bots are useful, but they may soon take my job. One task, bots are here now. Bots change the world and the way I live. Bots challenge what being human means. Let's see more about machines. From muscles to minds in 7 steps. 1. Muscles At first, people invent machines to replace human muscle. Like these simple machines. Machines with power make work easier for people. Also, Machine tools help people make things. Next, machines get motions. 2. Moves 
People make machines that move. Levers, gears, and cams replace human muscle controls. Some of these machines are useful, like clocks. Other machines move just to entertain humans. Like a pretty piano player. Or swimming silver swan. This machine plays chess. But it is sneaky. It probably has a person inside it to make it work. Still, it impresses this guy to make the first machine computers. Also, it impresses this guy to invent powered machines to make clock. In the 1950s, this computer does more calculations in a few years than all humans have ever done in our history. Up to then, the data is mostly used by military. If our bots have a human face, we need better digital brains. 3. Microprocessors These chips of silicon with micro networks of switches are called computer brains. Patterns of digital data are light speed processed in networks of micro info highways, but they are merely the hardware. They are impressive silicon brain cells, but still a long way from self thinking machines. 4. Human memory. First, let's look at how we humans think. To start, think how children learn. At first, we humans learn by trials and errors with rewards and specs. Human memory works as networks of neurons. That is, our neurons actually grow or wire thousands of connections to other brain cells. Our neurons fire bits of electricity when we think. Humans have a conscience and are sentient. Next, people take selfies and create lots of digital content. Where does all this data go? 5. Massive Data Centers The digital data we all create is stored in massive data centers. Here are some examples. Our world births with stored digital data. This data is like Lego building blocks for AI. Humans learn by taking in lots of data from our senses with natural sensors. Next, we teach AI to learn like humans do. 6. Machine Learning Humans teach machines to learn the same way we do. Humans write the software code that start AI computers learning quests. Next, bots learn to solve new problems by reinforced trials and errors. Machines surf the deep seas of digital data. AI learns based on human neural network models. For example, they notice data points that become lines, that connect into shapes, that have meaning, that join with words to make decisions. Remember, bots process data billions of times faster than humans. What do bots do today? We have chatbots and bots that self-drive vehicles. AI listens, translates, and talks in new languages. Robots replace humans, like workers in production, warehouses, and even coffee shops. The first shots of AI revolution are fire. Where will all this AI lead for us? Is the future awesome or apocalypse? 7. Machine Minds To answer this, we focus on a single moment called singularity. It is when machines get minds. AI becomes as smart as humans. They are AI, self-aware with their software minds. Human designed the first AIs, but at this point AI creates all the next generations of AIs. How will this impact humanity? Will it be an easy life for us? Or is it the end of days extinction for humanity? To close, first, humans made machines for more muscles. Next, machines move us. Human program machines with microprocessors to help us solve problems. Humans learn how our brains work with neural nets. We make computers and smartphones. 
We've built massive data centers to store our zettabyte of digital data. Next, humans teach machines how to learn too. Today, AI bots drive cars, beat humans at games, and make things. One day soon, AI becomes self-aware, sentient with a mind of its own. Then what? Will AI make our lives easy or be the end of us? The more I know, the better I adapt to AI. I'll for shareware helps. It is the knowledge to adapt and thrive to coming tech changes. Our real intelligent lives, they are AI. AI, a changing. turns actions into car parts that we drive. Welcome to the science of cars. Our world is so complex, but the basic science is easy to understand. There are billions of cars and trucks on our world. Let's see the science to make cars in seven easy steps. Pour or cast very hot liquid metal into a mold. The liquid metal cools into solid shape. This makes the engine. The big holes are for pistons. Other holes are for cooling. The liquid metal has more heat. Just like how water can be ice, liquid, or steam. How hot is the liquid metal? Iron melts at five times the heat to cook pizza. Wheels and cases are cast too. Many plastic parts like this steering wheel are cast also. Next, engine piston holes are polished to just the right size. Pound or forge hot metal into shapes. Hot metal is hammered between these tools to make the crank shaft. The shaft will turn over a thousand times a minute. The secret science is in groups of atoms called grains. For example, wood grows with grains. When liquid metal cools, it has unordered random grains. Forging forces the grains to all line up in the same direction. It makes pounded parts stronger. This includes piston, rods, and heads. Engine parts are put together or sub-assembled. In the engine, gas burns and pushes the piston down to turn the crankshaft. We need more parts to get the turning to the tires. Gears change to transmit turning. Gears are circles with teeth. Triangle tools cut apart chips to make the gear teeth. This is like scissors cutting paper and a knife peeling an apple. Can openers, pizza cutters, and axes are examples. Triangle-shaped tools cut apart pieces of warm metal to make gears. Other gears change the amount of power and speed output from the engine. These gears can change the turning direction from the engine to the perpendicular tires. Before we make the tires, we need to understand pressure. Pressure is the amount of force that pushes onto something. For tires, layers of rubber and wire are pressed together and heated in a mold to make hollow tires. Cars ride on tires full of air pressure. Brakes stop the car with pressure on brake fluid. In tubes that press on the wheels. Next, our car needs a frame for support and shape. Push warm sheet metal between tools to form frame parts. This huge machines make frame parts that uses pressure, like the weight of over 1,000 elephants. About half of the car's weight is made of press-formed parts. 
This includes the frame, roof, and doors. Next, we need to join the frame pieces together. Spot weld uses heat from electricity to melt small points. The liquid hot spots cool and join the frame parts together. Robots make thousands of spot welds to assemble the frame. Flowing electricity makes heat. This heater, toaster, and light bulb are examples. Doors are spot welded too. Next, we paint the car. First, the car is dipped into the undercoat. This keeps the car from rusting or corroding. Next, the middle coat is sprayed onto the car. This fills in places that are not smooth. Last, the top coat is painted onto the car. This is the color that we see. This is like how static energy saps doorknobs or like lightning flows from the sky to earth. Negative paint flows to the positive frame. This is called electrostatic painting. Next, we need somewhere to sit down. First, weave threads into cloth. Second, cut the colored cloth into pieces. Third, sew the fabric pieces and stuffing together to make high wear chairs. Last, we put together or assemble all the car parts. This automated assembly tool installs major systems. Robots do heavy lifting and strong assembling. People do delicate work like installing windshields. The windshield is glued in place. Nuts and bolts twisted or torqued to hold parts together. Also, nuts and bolts are great for removable parts like wheels. We feel torque when we twist open a jar. Next, the car is tested to make sure all the systems work properly. Now the car is ready for us to drive. Almost over! Science is in all the steps that make cars. Pour the engine with heat. Pound crankshafts until groups of grains line up. Cut apart gears with triangle tools. Push sheet metal into molds with pressure to form frame parts. Spot weld the frame assembly with thousands of small circles of electric heat. Paint with negatively charged spray onto positively charged parts. Finally, put the car all together with twisting torque and other ways to assemble. Cars look very complex, but the basic science inside is so easy to understand. Those who know science go farther in life. 5.1 Digital Computers 5 Bits Science enables micro networks where digital data compute human commands. Welcome to Science of Computers with 5 Bits 1. Ebits To start, electricity flows. In a billionth of a second, electricity flows this far. Computers work with tiny bits of electricity. Let's call them ebits. We write this as ones and zeros. Data is turned into electricity patterns of on or off ebits. There are two types of ebits, data and directions. Like a traffic cop, directions called software do things with the data. For example, we type letters that turn into ebits. That chips turn into text. So we can send emails made from ebits. Also, pictures are just millions of points called pixels. Picture points are defined by millions of on or off ebits. Videos have billions of ebits per minute. Ebits in chips with math turn into text, videos, and music. 
The Ebit heartbeat is a special e-pulse clock. Every second, it sends billions of electricity pulse e-bits to chips. Gigahertz means billions of e-bits per second. That's a lot! e-bits work great in chips, but e-bits are hard to store. 2. M-bits Next, we need very tiny magnets. Each magnet has two sides, north and south. In disk drives, e-bits change into magnet or m-bits. The right hand burps very tiny magnets that store on the disk. Each north magnet is a one or on. The science is that when electricity flows in a coil of wire, it makes a magnet. The opposite is true too. The read head turns m-bits back into e-bits that go to the chip. Think about how fast all this happens. Billions of e-bits are stored as m-bits every second. Then, Billions of m-bits change back into e-bits. This cycle is the lifeblood of basic science and how my computer works. e-bits and m-bits are fine inside a computer, but how do I see all this? 3. L-bits Light is one type of EM wave. Made of electricity and magnetic parts. Light is 4 to 700 billionth of a meter long. The screen works when chips send e-bits to the screen. The e-bits make red, green, and blue bits of light, or L-bits glow. All the L-bits make pictures we see. Millions of these points are refreshed over 60 times per second to make the screen we see. As a side note, light makes electricity in solar panels. Now, we want to connect with other people. 4. R-Bits To connect, computers need another EM wave. Radio waves are longer than light waves. That is, they are a different EM wavelength. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work with radio waves. E-bits change into radio wave or R-bits that fly through space and connect us. 5. K-bits The other bits we talked about are data. We use data to do things. We create useful bits of knowledge called K-bits. All data has to exist somewhere, like data centers. Worldwide, it is estimated that the data stored by billions of internet using people is a trillion gigabytes, called a zettabyte. Image sharing all these bits of knowledge. Share k-bits add up to real human intelligence. As we face the future with robots and AI. To close, E-bits change M-bits stored on disk drives. E-bits also cause the RGB pixels to glow. L-bits join to make on-screen pictures. R-bits help us connect with worldwide computers. What I do daily with my K-bits, like dot art, paints the overall picture of my life. One shared K-bit at a time. 5.2 Computers 7 Opposites Science energizes computers with binary opposites. Welcome to Computers with 7 Opposites. In the past, computers looked like that. This is a story of how computers become what they are today. 1. Holes or no holes. At first, Punch cards with holes or no holes control threads to weave cloth patterns. Next, machines with punch cards count people and collect census data in the USA. Fast forward, computers still use punch cards into the 1980s. Data is the holes in the cards. 2. On or off eBits 
Digital computers change data directly into on or off bits of electricity. What do we do with all this digital data? We type text and documents, take pictures, and create content. Digital data also entertains. Computers do more than just count and create. They also control. 3. Human hands are computer controls. At first, machines give the muscle, but humans control the actions. An example is the first elevator lifts. People control the machine that goes up and down. Today, computers control lifts. In the past, people make things like cars by hand. Today, computers control machines and robots that do much of the production work. 4. Big or small size At first, computers are room size but weak. To process data, people interface with dumb screens. The screens are called dumb because the terminal does no computing. The dumb screens are connected to the main computer. Today, we are often connected to the computing cloud with its shared software and storage. 5. Out or in sync In the past, computers are slow. Today, they are faster. Here's an example of out of sync video and sound. In the past, Computers often pause or buffer. We have to wait as computers think to process data. We see this when watching a video and the pictures and sound get out of sync. Today, it is amazing to think how in sync all our on-demand digital data is. 6. Simple or complex In the past, computers are complex machines. This has over 19,000 V-tubes. Room-sized computers are physically complex, but only simple on performance. Today, small computers look simple, but inside, they have the second most complicated objects in the known galaxy, microprocessors called chips. The first most complicated object is still the human brain. Today, computers often simplify tasks. But computers also do the opposite. 7. Alone or connected At first, personal computers can only work by themselves or stand alone. Today, billions of computer devices worldwide are connected via the internet. Amazing how all of these computers speak the same digital language when human users speak hundreds of different languages. Connected, computer chips also enable self-driving cars and autopilots for planes. Separate computer chips are also in alone, everyday objects. IoT connects all these objects together as part of the Internet of Things. Sensors and chips send data to computer servers. To close, at the core of computers are opposites, holes or the whole world, on or off ebits, human hands or computer controlled, alone or connected. In one way, computers simplify our lives by connecting us to people and the things we care about. In other ways, computers give us access to so much data that computers complicate our lives. May we keep in mind one more opposite. Be careful that computer servers don't become our AI online bosses. 6. Digital Smartphones 7 Waves Wavy Clever Science enables my multitasking smartphones. Welcome to Smartphone Science with 7 Waves. What makes my phone smart? Let's see the science inside telephones, cell phones, and smartphones. The word telephone means far sound. Phones send my voice to my faraway friends. Wave 1. Sound. Shaking things make sounds. Sounds are physical waves in the air. Vocal cords shake the air in a pattern of my voice. Sound does not travel very far. My ears hear sounds. 
Ears change sound into electricity. Ears send the E signals to my brain. What is electricity? Electricity is a form of energy. We see electricity when lightning flows from sky to earth. In a phone, sound changes into electricity, E patterns of my voice. The phone number tells where to send my call. Electric switches send my E voice to the correct wires. At first, Long distance calls use V tubes to make the electrical signal stronger. V tubes are expensive and burn out often. Something better is needed. Later, transistors are invented to replace V tubes. With science, weak signals go in and strong signals come out. Later, we will see that transistors also act as switches. The E patterns of my voice flow through wires and switches to my friends. Next, we need to know that magnets and electricity are related. Magnets have two sides or poles, north and south. Opposite poles attract. Same poles push apart. This is one of the most important facts of our modern world. Electricity flowing in a wire makes a magnet, called an electromagnet. Also, the reverse is true. Turning wire near magnets make electricity. This is how electricity in our homes is made. Also, how electric motors work. Later, we see how speakers use electromagnets too. Cell phones are next. Cell phones can move around. This is why they are called mobile phones. Let's look at the secret science inside cell phones. First, physical sound waves change into electricity inside the phone. Cell phones use battery power to do this. Early cell phone batteries are huge. Next, thin lithium batteries are invented. Perfect! Battery powered is called direct current, DC. Next, we need more waves. Wave 2 is AC. Battery electricity changes into AC electricity waves. We have AC electricity in our homes. Cell phones work when AC changes into the next wave. Remember, when electricity flows in a wire, it makes a magnet. Wave 3 is called EM. Very tiny bits of electricity join with very small magnets. These waves are called electromagnetic or EM. Changing the number of frequency of waves per second changes the type of EM. What does this mean to my phone? Wave 4 are called radio waves. AC signals go to my cell phone's antenna. AC electricity changes into special EM waves called radio waves. Radio waves fly through air and space. Radio waves are millions of a meter long. My cell phone works because of EM radio waves. The cell phone radio waves go to the cell tower antennas. Here, computers pick the best path to route my call. This includes a network of other cell towers, landlines, and sometimes satellites. What makes my smartphone smart? Smartphone chips are thousands of times better than cell phone chips. Today, smartphones are not as smart as humans. The human brain has about 100 billion cells. In about 10 years, Computer chips may have the same number of transistors, but the human brain has a secret. Each brain cell has thousands of interconnections, which today make human brains smarter than computer chips. Smartphones use solid-state drives with special chips to store data. Smartphones need more than just hardware. Software are directions and applications, or apps. 
Software tells smartphones what to do and how to do it. Apps do actions like take pictures, send emails, or surf the web. First, we need the next wave. Wave 5 is light. Light is a type of EM wave. The sun and my smartphone screen gives off light. Light waves are billions of a meter long. This is over a thousand times smaller than radio waves. How is smartphone light made? Higher energy electrons flow into low energy material. These LEDs give off light. Screens have millions of red, green, and blue points called subpixels. Chips control the fast flow of electricity to change the screen pictures. We input info into the phone via touchscreen. Next, the science gets a bit gooey. Graphical user interface, or GUI, is how I talk with my smartphone. By touching GUI icons, I input my instructions to my smartphone. I use smartphone sensors like accelerometers and gyros to play video games. Sensors do more than just play. Other sensors like the digital compass and GPS work with map apps. Smartphones also make music. Sounds are made from songs saved in digital memory. The speaker has an electromagnet connected to a cone to turn the e-patterns back into sounds. Next, we take digital pictures. Light changes into e-patterns for digital pictures. We take selfie pictures and share with more radio waves. Remember, cell phones work with EM radio waves. Smartphones also use other radio waves for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. With EM radio waves, we connect to the internet. We use the internet with the next wave. Wave 6 is WWW DataSurf. I surf the World Wide Web to search for answers to my questions. Chatbots help me surf waves of data. The internet connects worldwide computers together to enable the last wave. Wave 7 is about OK waves. With our smartphones, we share online knowledge or OK waves. OK waves are the useful data that we share with everyone on our connected earth. This video ends at the start of OK wave connections. Imagine a world where everyone has access to all the world's knowledge. Imagine, we apply OK waves to positively improve our own lives and our peaceful societies. Now, that is smart science! 7. Smartphones Objects before apps Science turns separate objects into my smartphone with sensors and apps. Welcome to Smartphones! 7 Objects Before Their Apps May smartphones lead to smarter people? At first, cameras use film. Next, inside digital cameras, light shines on a sensor to capture pictures. Today, photo apps use tiny sensors to take digital pictures too. We've gone from separate cameras to selfies. At first, maps are printed on paper. New places need new maps for us to find directions. Next, global satellites, GPS, send location and time signals to separate receivers. Today, map apps use GPS tiny sensors and software for us to find directions. We've gone from paper maps to easily finding new places. At first, groovy records make music. Later, records are replaced by CDs. In a CD player, light becomes on or off patterns. That turns into sounds in the speakers. Today, Music apps use songs stored as digital memory to make new music. 
we've gone from separate records and CDs to playing and recording smartphone sounds. At first, movie cameras use film. Next, video cameras use tape. Then, digital video cameras use sensors and memory to record video. Video cameras take over 20 still pictures a second. Today, video apps use the camera for pictures and microphone for sound. Software keeps pictures and sounds in sync. We've gone from separate movie cameras to smartphones that records and plays video. We also play video games with more sensors and action-filled software. At first, letters are written by hand. Next, typewriters type letters. We pay to mail letters by post. It takes days or weeks for letters to be delivered. Today, email apps use touchscreen and software to write texts and emails. We've gone from slow letters to instant emails delivered worldwide. At first, library books are used to search for subjects. Can you imagine drive to the library, search card decks to find books? To search for data, lots of work for little information. Today, search apps quickly connect to the global internet that seems endless. We search the world's knowledge at our fingertips. We've gone from separate books to worldwide web searches. Wow! Just one more. At first, telephones are landlocked in one place. Next, cell phones make calls on the moon. Cell phones use radio waves to connect global tower networks and telephone lines. Today, phone apps change sounds into radio waves to make worldwide phone calls. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth use radio waves too. We've gone from separate phones to connected smartphones. Now to the end. Hello! Yes, it once took all of these to do what my smartphone can do today. I take pictures, find directions, listen to music, take and play videos, send emails, search the internet, and of course, make phone calls. All with my handheld smartphone. Okay then, thanks for the call. Bye-bye! Electricity. Electricity empowers electronics. It makes modern objects move with motors. Electricity is important inside me too. Welcome to the science of electricity. It zaps and shocks. It flashes and thunders. It is the digital power in electronics that compute and connect our daily lives. Let's learn about electricity with 7 amps. 1. Minds These people use their minds to discover electricity. This person captures electricity in jars. This guy notices electricity in animals. Volta sees a torpedo fish with different cells. He makes a trap of different metals with acid in between. He makes the first battery. Franklin experiments show lightning is electricity. 2. Model People make model to explain electricity. Atoms have plus charge centers. Negative charge electrons circle around and above the nucleus. We think very tiny electrons orbit the nucleus in 3D. But electrons do more than just orbit the nucleus. 3. Move Electric charges move. In a battery, electricity moves in circle from negative side to the plus side. While it moves, electricity does work on light and make lights glow. 
electricity has push called voltage and flow called current. Four, make. We make static electricity when we walk across carpet and touch metal. Batteries who use two metals with different electron pull and a special fluid to make electrons move around the circle. We turn wire near magnet make AC electricity flow. We use water, steam, and wind power to move wires near magnets to make this kind of electricity. 5. Modern This AC type of electricity from the wall charges batteries from our modern digital objects. Digital power is actually tiny bursts of electricity. Look around our daily lives to see how many things are electric. Electricity powers objects. From lights to TVs, to fridges, washers, and dryers. And these too. They have a secret insight to make them move. 6. Motors Electric motors turn. That is, electricity flows, makes electromagnets that push against magnets. The result is electric motors make things move. Here are examples. Electric motors turn these too. In electric cars, batteries turn motors that make the wheels move. 7. Me There is electricity in me too. Chemical electricity self-drives my heart and lungs. Next, my senses change inputs into electricity. They send electric signals to my brain. This includes eye light, ear sounds, nose smells, tongue tastes, and skin feels. Input senses change into electric signals and sent to my brain. Connected brain cells electrically think and decide what to do next. My brain sends more electric signals via nerve roads to move my muscles. This is how I grab things. Talk and walk. To close, human minds notice nature and discover electricity. This model explains it. Muscles and motors move with it. People make electricity. We use it to power our modern lives. My heart beats, senses sense, and brain thinks with it. Electricity powers lightning, lights, and electronics. It is the on switch push in my life force too. Wow! Nine. Everyday objects. What is the science in everyday items? Where did the ideas for them come from? Click this link to view the ebook. 10. Farms to factories. In the past, most people are farmers. Today, factories make most of our modern objects. Welcome to Science from Farms to Factories. In the past, most people are poor farmers. They have just enough to eat to stay alive. Science changes this in seven steps. 1. Better farms. For thousands of years, most people are farmers. With science, big changes start about 200 years ago. Iron plows are stronger than wooden plows. Nitrogen fertilizers 
are added to the soil for plant vitamins. Seed drills improve how to plant seeds. Machines pick the crops too. The result is more food made by fewer people. 2. More iron This guy uses coal to make a fuel called coke. Not this coke, but this coke. A new fuel to make cleaner and cheaper iron. At first, cooking pots and bridges are made. Next, lots of iron tools are made too. But what is needed is more power. 3. Steam Power This guy makes what steam engines made of iron. Coal fires turn water into hot steam. Steam turns engines with science. Chemical fuel energy changes into moving engines. Steam engines power iron trains too. Let's see how steam engines are made. 4. Machine tools Better iron tools make more precise parts. Machines bore center holes of steam engines and cannons. Make more precise flat plates. Turn precise round parts. These machines make steam engines more efficient. They can also make other machines. 5. Gears Machines are made to do jobs that people did. Examples are spinning cotton into threads. Before we see what else machines do, we need better metals and lots more of it. 6. Stronger steels Steel is iron with just the right amount of carbon. This guy invents a way to make a lot of new stronger steel like this. Stronger machines are made with this new steel. 7. Factories Next, powered machines and people work together to make products at the first factories. For example, steam engines power looms that weave threads into cloth. Sewing machines stitch cloth into clothes. Shoes are made by machines too. This guy uses science to control high oven heat to make wedge wood ceramics. To close, in the path, most people are poor farmers. Next, people learn science and how to make powered machines. Science continues to improve our lives today too. People have gone from only enough to eat farmers to factories that make everything from autos to smartphones. Today, there are new challenges. Factories pollute our planet. Robots are doing more jobs instead of people. We need a balance. Modern machines help us make more food. Factories also make products we all use. May the science we learn lead to wisdom on how to share what's produced. 11. Video Games Science is inside our exciting cyber games world. Welcome to the science of video games. Video games are adventures based on exciting art and science. Video games are played by billions of people worldwide. They are also a hundred billion dollar business. Let's see more about them with 7 P's. What? Produce or make the cyber world. Characters and objects are defined inside the computer. Some are still pictures. Some are standalone videos. This includes video make with people in motion capture suits. Much of the cyber world is defined by math and science in 3D space. Objects are actually tiny shapes called polygons. Main characters have cyber bones, joints, and muscles. Things move based on science. In the game world, real-world physics can be changed, so the objects can move with enhanced actions. In game, players and objects are stronger for effects. 
but cyber worlds have limits. 2. Process with computer hardware and logic code software. Game world objects have to do more than just move. They have to interact. That is, they move with meaning. Computer science software defines what happens when objects hit, crash, and shoot. The more complicated the game, the more hardware processing is needed. Have to balance cyber complexity with process power and speed. Special power cards called GPUs process video images and send them real-time to the screen. But there's a problem. Inside computers, the cyber game world is 3D, but the screen is only 2D. 3. Pixels on screen. Pixels are light points that make the pictures we see. 3D objects inside the computer are changed to fit the 2D screen. That is, what we see on screen looks 3D, but it's a clever illusion. When the screen is off, we see that it is a flat, two-dimensional sheet shape. On screen is our interface with the cyber game world. Next comes choices. 4. Pick Options With the controller, we select choices to set up our unique gaming experience. We choose which character we will be. We choose supplies, tools, and weapons. We customize our cyber world with options for where, when, and what challenges. Think about all the science behind all the choices we make. Different designs, colors, and objects each impact what comes next. 5. Play Ready, set, go! On screen, actions are enabled by science. How we jump and run. How we shoot and hit. How things break and die. How we drive and fly. There is science behind the cyber worlds we explore. What do we get for all our online efforts? 6. Points When we succeed in video games, we score points. There are surprises and secret rewards too. Science is the secret secret sauce how success is measured. Science turns online interacts into points. Think of the science inside virtual and augmented reality devices too. All this gaming now leads to us. 7. People Video games entertain and educate. We play them because they are fun. There is science behind how they make us feel. When we play, our brains release fight or flight and feel good chemicals. Video games help our cognitive skills. Some online trainings use video game tech too. There is concern about game addiction with too much time spent online. Amazingly, the internet connects us to multiplayer games and communities. The best esports gamer athletes make lots of money playing games. To close, video games are popular. In cyber worlds, we escape and explore. Online games are art and actions. With creative stories and characters, they colorfully fill up our senses. In the future, how will humans adapt as online games become lifelike? Today, video games are animated, exciting, and emotional fun. There is science behind the moving shapes, interactions, and scores. To close, on simple science from airplanes to video games. When we know science, we better understand ourselves and our world. And the ever-increasingly important everyday tech objects. In the past, these things help humanity survive. Today, 
Easy Science helps us comprehend our lives within our complex tech world. Science also gives us the skills to adapt and thrive to the turbo speed changes of our mega tech tomorrow. See the catalog for more Alfred books. Printed copies are also available on Amazon. Over 4 million free Alfred ebooks and videos have been downloaded. Subscribe now!